Thank you, people of Glacelanta, for being as hardworking and kind as you are. I could not be more blessed to have the opportunity to come here and talk to you as I am now. As you have heard, I am Supreme Lord, High Admiral, Cooler Ember, and Glaze, the Benevolent. It was just about six months ago that I joined the Glaze Clan operations here in Glacelanta with our holy benefactors, Nicholas N. Glaze, Talon C. Glaze, and Suki K. Glaze. Prior to that, I lived over with my significant others across the sea and was still in training for this holy mission. In my education, a question often presented to me is what does a holy benefactor actually do? I too had that same question. Dr. Filliard S. Glaze, who was a presiding educator in our church for many generations, described their duty as follows. He said that the presiding benefactor helps take care of the success, security, and well-being of the people who live under their ruling light. I think this is a good description of what we do. Under the remote guidance of more educated senior members, we look over the construction and take care of the military, guardsmanship, and business throughout our realms. We also oversee humanitarian efforts, making sure that charity organizations are given room and opportunity to flourish, who are a blessing to many of Aradam's children throughout the world. However, one of our great blessings is that we have the magical prowess to do good for our people, such as investing and developing growing magic within these forests through the power given to us by Aradam's holy light. You only have to look up and see the bright light shining down upon you to truly understand how much Aradam, the walking sun, truly loves you. The Glaze Clan has led and governed over hundreds of nations throughout history across the different planes. I can assure you that we have great competency through the likes of Iron Gnidi Glaze, Chaz P. Glaze, and even my personal mentor and creator, Ember M. Glaze. All members who I personally have very warm feelings towards. I can also testify that they are living prophets and that Ember M. Glaze has the authority to exercise the full power of a demigod should we be in a time of crisis. It is a grand tragedy that the ruling class of Atlanta had not yet become so close that we could set up the proper protections. Perhaps then we could have prevented all the death and tragedy that transpired on that faithless day. But there is a silver lining in all of this, and that is you. You are the reason we can have the strength to carry on our duties this day. Seeing you work and be built inspires us to improve further upon your conditions. We could not have channeled Aradam's light to enchant these forests were it not for the faith your actions have given us. I hope you can take it home with you that we appreciate you and that you can come to our temples with your problems. Our trusted benefactors like Tsuki, Nicholas and Talon travel the seas and work tirelessly day in and day out to make this world a better place. To be like you, to receive such a wonderful place to live. I think one of the most unforgettable and stunning sights is when you look upon our island, the place we have built together from up above on the temple's balcony. Truly, Glace Lanta has a special meaning to me and my family. When my caretaker and creator, Ember M. Glace, was growing up, he did not have the security of a place like this, of a Glace clan to protect him. He was forced to live with an undead who beat him on a daily basis and endured hardships in a dangerous land. He did not achieve the peace that you have now until he was already several hundred years old 
and the Glaze clan could spread their domain to where he was. I cannot stress enough how lucky we both are to have each other and to be able to rely on each other under Aradam's caring light against the hardships of the world. We should look upon fondly what occurred to this island when we took charge, despite those circumstances that led us to this point. It was the silver lining of tragedy that sprung a seed of hope and blossomed into something far greater than before. The pedigree of our benefactors are beyond impressive. My historical knowledge, going back generations, from Chasp Iglesias to Astolfo Iglesias, and even our very own Nicholas Iglesias. And I must say that I am deeply impressed with the leadership of our Nicholas Iglesias and his very capable team. I deeply treasure my association with him that's been fostered since I started working here. Late nights, early mornings, in between work, my memory informs me that much of my life as a child revolved around our temple's holy library. Even now, it evokes a plethora of memories, some of those fond, and of course some of those not so fond. For me, it was the outpost of Glaceburville. Each time I entered our holy temple, and its library doors, I was greeted by a sign over the entry, which read, And with all thy getting, get understanding. Now we all know that recall Fondo's repetition, either from having the scripture from the book of Proverbs engraved inedibly in my mind, repeating each time as I enter the library during my training, or as I am about to bestow upon you today. And with all you're getting, get understanding. And I would also like to invite you to think about its meaning and how you might benefit from it, as I have done so. I have put this in my mind over and over again, and my interpretation of its meaning has grown considerably. Now perhaps you can benefit from some of my observations. When I was doing trainee work on the mountainous outskirts surrounding the outpost of Graceburville, struggling to learn a very difficult language, there were some vocabulary words that I heard early and often. Greetings such as Drem Lok Lok and Prusa Sul were two of these, but another was Suu Dre Ni Vodestand. This means I don't understand. This phrase, along with this hand expression that is used in the Dragonfold Mountains near the outpost of Glaceburwell, this seems to be one of the favorite responses from Dragonkin, contacts directed towards young missionaries when they attempt to strike up conversation. It appears that the answer was always Shu'u Dre Ni Vodestand. Now I initially, as I reflected upon the meaning of, and with all thy getting, get understanding, I thought of understanding more in the terms of this type of comprehension. What might might I might hear with my ears and understand with my mind? And I thought the dragon king saying Su'u Dre Ni understand more as, do I understand or do I not understand? And with all thy getting, get understanding, or make sure to obtain a higher level of comprehension. However, as I have observed and studied the use of the word understanding in the scriptures or from words of living prophets, I have come to realize a deeper meaning. So, I'd like for you all to consider very, very carefully the words by Chas P. Glace and listen closely to these because there's great content in what he has said here. First, we start with the intelligence with which we were born to our intelligence. We acknowledge as we search for answers, study, and educate ourselves. 
To our knowledge, we add experience, which will lead us to a level of wisdom. In addition to our wisdom, we add the help of Aradam, the walking sun, through our prayers of faith, asking for spiritual guidance and strength. Then, and only then, do we reach an understanding in our hearts, which motivates us to do what's right, let the consequences follow. The feelings of an understanding heart gives us the sweet spirit of assurance of not only knowing, but doing what is right, no matter the circumstances. The understanding in our hearts comes from a close interdependence of study and prayer. Okay, now consider again with what we've all just discussed and with all that I get. Get understanding. Understanding in this context follows intelligence, knowledge, experience, wisdom, and prompting from Aradam's light, all of which leads us to an understanding to know and to do what is right. Now, standing here today, you have entered an important intersection in your lives. Right now, with all you have experienced in recent times, you are in a and with all thy getting phase of your lives. So what is it that you are going to be getting right now? Each of you think about the next three to four years of your lives. It may be getting a husband or a wife, or it might be children, your own family, maybe something else, a job, your old house rebuilt, a garden, a position in the faith. These are just some of the many things you might be getting. Now, in order to manage these very important things we get, one must obtain understanding, as the scripture teaches us. This understanding comes to us, remember, as an interdependent of study and prayer. Okay, now said another way, man must have trust or reliance upon Aradam. Astolfo Iglesias described this when he likened the word unto a seed, as he stated, For it beginneth in light, and my understanding beginneth to be delicious to me. As you listen closely to Nicholas N. Glaze in his talks, he often quotes a scripture from Proverbs, which adds another dimension about this understanding. Trust in Aradam with all thy heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. So as we trust in and rely on Aradam, a greater measure of understanding comes from him into our heart rather than our own understanding which comes only to our head. Now, I got a wonderful example that comes to us from a powerful woman who played a key role in the peacification, who trusted in Aradam and leaned not onto her own understanding. Listen to the story that comes to us from the Picture Cake Lace right after our outpost was founded near the Dragonfold Mountains. Nepictor bravely defended our outpost with a group of benevolent benefactors, not unlike our very own who protect us. Now, her very large responsibility was to bring this group of what could only be described as saints onto the highest part of the mountain to negotiate with the dragons. This happened near early spring, so in the picture, with the help of her fellow Glaze Clan members, moved the group through these dangerous mountains while making sure that none of her brethren died. When they arrived at the topmost part of the mountain, they were followed by a prismatic aurora blocking the way to the top, and peace with the dragonkin. Murmuring began almost immediately. The picture, relying on Aradam's wisdom, had to unite their faith, and so in her words, she said this, When our scouts found the dragon hideouts at the mountaintop, we all began preparing our expedition. Once they arrived below the prismatic aurora, she said, We had all the necessary spells and incentives to bring peace, 
and we numbered 20 strong. However, the path to the top is blocked by a prismatic aurora, the strongest we've ever seen, and invisible from any significant distance. And so she says, quote, I then called our Glaze clan members together and reminded them that we were traveling by the grace of the walking sun. As much as Misami K. Glaze was when he moved to us in our organization, our most dire time of need, as the faithful, we have as much a reason to expect Aradam's blessing. I then desired them to be hopeful and to lift their hearts continuously in prayer to Aradam the walking sun that we might be prospered. This was done in the midst of great complaining. To the complainers, she pleaded, quote, No, no, said I, we will not fail in our mission, nor will any children in our outpost be attacked. Only do be patient and stop your murmuring. I have no doubt that Aradam's guiding light is over us. The second in command of this expedition, a cunning man named Purple Mountain True M. Glaze, used powerful divinations to examine the prismatic aurora and estimated with great certainty that the aurora would not run out in duration but would also block all teleportation into the area. This was devastating news to the group. Supplies in the outpost were low and threats were mounting. So with this news, the picture records her further admonition to her fellow faithful. You profess your trust in Aradam. Then how can you feel the murmur to complain as you do? You are even more unreasonable than our children are. For here are my trusted members from whom I expected firmness and energy to believe would rather cease to exist before they give up and end their journey. Why is it so? Have any of you lacked? Where is your faith? Where is your confidence in Aradam? Can you not realize that paradise is to be made by him and all further events dictated by him? Suppose that all my fellow saints here should lift their hearts to Aradam in prayer. The way might be opened before us. How easy would it be for Aradam to cause the prismatic aurora to break away and let us bring peace. Now observe here the great faith of Nepictor K. Glaze and how she goes to trust in Aradam. And she asks these faithful with her to not lean onto their own understanding. She says this, Now, fellow faithful, if you will all raise your desires to the guiding light that the prismatic aurora breaks apart, as sure as Aradam lives, it will be done. At that instant, a noise was heard, like bursting thunder, the scared seeking cover. While purple smiled towards the sound, the prismatic aurora broke apart enough space to fit a single creature. The picture Kegle saw the tent and headed through right into the unknown mountain top. The faithful who had gone with her, seeing this inspiration and true understanding, chose to also understand with their hearts. They cherished, for they understood that they would succeed and the outpost would remain safe. It did not take long for Nepictor to return to her fellow comrades and inform of the good news. The prismatic aurora had been weakened by the dragons as part of an internal rebellion against Arnaz the Terrible, their greatest obstacle to peace in this region. Together, with the help of Nepictor, these dragons were able to slay Arnaz and as a sign of gratitude, would let our humble organization exist in their realm without fear of violence. Had Nepictor Keglais not displayed such understanding, I, a mere child on this outpost, would not have been with you today. The fate of Nepictor Keglais leaning onto her faith and not her own understanding. And with all thy getting, Get understanding, or said another way, 
trust in Aradim with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. I have personally observed the heartbreak and personal havoc whose focus is on the worldly getting and not Aradim's understanding. It seems that those who lean onto their own understanding are more likely to develop a disproportionate focus on selfish gain instead of the greater good of all people. Keeping the getting in accordance to the scriptural guidance of understanding will temper your temporal appetite. This will allow the proper context for your activities as a citizen a productive member of society and as Aradam's children. One of my most trusted mentors suggested to me that ambition is a good thing, but it should be tempered by an order of learn, earn, serve. This had a great impact on me as a young trainee. Nicholas N. Glaze teaches me the same thing in a different way. He teaches a pattern that leads to trusting in Aradam and relying on him rather than ourselves. He taught each of us has a fourfold responsibility. First, we have a responsibility to the children we serve as caretakers for and our fellow caretakers. Second, to our senior Glaze Clan members. Third, to the accomplishments of our fellow Glaze Clan members. And fourth, we have a responsibility to ourselves. A balance, if you will. He suggests that we fulfill this fourfold responsibility through daily prayer, caring and learning both of the world and scripture. Honesty and loyalty to our senior Glaze clan members. Fulfilling your temple responsibilities. Partaking in regular temple prayer. As well as studying the scripture on your lonesome resting, performing recreational activities, and exercising. Tsuki Keglase said, This time, like all times, is a very good one, if we know but what to do with it. Fortunately, my senior Glaze Clan members and your benevolent benefactors never have to look far to know what to do. And so, this is your time now, with your knowledge and understanding of Aradam's great love, you can take it unto yourselves to take responsibility and be rewarded to make Gleislanta an even better place. In a recent talk, Nicholas N. Gleis quoted a scripture from Proverbs as he had done before. I will read this one more time. Trust in the Aradam with all thy heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. He shall direct thine paths. He then said this. That has been the story of my life. And what a great life it has been. I have great expectations for each of you. As has Aradam the walking son. And so I finish where I began today. With an exhortation found in Proverbs. And with all thy getting, get understanding, real understanding. This will come to you as you realize that interdependence of study and prayer as you commit, as you maintain the commitment to serve while learning and earning. And as you lean not unto yourself, but rely or trust in Aradam. I offer my testimony of this, the divinity of Aradam's word and his role as our benevolent savior.